anything running here. So um, any questions while I'm frantically getting everything up and electronically working? Just any general questions or queries at all? Okay, that was strange. I got cut out. I must have just turned it off by accident. All right. Um, I'm back, right? Can anyone see me in the... Um... I don't know why they put that so close. That's... Okay, there we go. Maybe I should have done pre-recorded this whole time. Wouldn't have issues like that. I should have just unpinned it from the bar. Okay, so while this is still going, let's start talking. So measures of spread. Um, last time we looked at measures of location, right? So looking at the mean, mode, and uh, uh, yeah, mode, median, and uh, mean. And today here's another measure of spread. So. Um, what we would be interested in is seeing how close together the values are or how, sp how spread out apart they are. And so um, if we want to describe the spread, well, there's two main ways of looking at it. There's the, the range or interquarter range is one option. So for the range itself, well, that would simply just be the range of values. So the highest value minus the smallest value. That's really just the measure of how well, how far apart all the values are, or could be. Right, so nothing too major there. Highest value minus the lowest value. And so, of course, if we look at uh, this example, what's the highest value? Nine, and what's the smallest value? Largest value is nine, smallest value is four. So it's simply, the range is gonna be five, not rocket science. So it's um, range of five. What about this next one? So the largest and smallest, sometimes you might order this to sort of see it clearly. Largest value of this one? 25, do we agree with that in chat? Just check we wouldn't hear you, okay. Okay, hopefully the audio is okay. So um, largest value is 25, what's the smallest value? 12, yeah, there's a 12 here. So it's going to be a difference of 25 and 12, which is 13. So that one's pretty simple, right? The range. Um, so some issues with, um, yeah, so some issues with the range is it can be dispersed by outliers. So one thing we might consider is the interquarter range. And so this also gives, uh, it sort of, it basically just gives us the range of the middle 50% values. So it's another um, measure of the spread of data. And as you might see, if I was to like, say, have a look at say something with say one and then four, four, five, of course, the range being four doesn't tell us that most of the values are around four and five. So um, this would be sensitive to outliers. Whereas the interquarter range sort of mitigates that a bit. And so to talk about the interquartile range, as we should look at the quartiles, what that actually means. 
And it basically, these are the points at which we split the data into quarters. Okay, so um, the lower, lower quartile or Q1 or QL separates the bottom quarter, the bottom 25% of scores. Q3 or QU separates the top quarter, the top 25% of scores. And Q2 separates them into the middle values, which you know is already as the median, right? So Q2 is the second quartile is simply just the middle value. And you might have this sort of picture here. So here's our min, here's a max somewhere amongst this range of, a range of values. So they might be spread out, um, assuming they're sort of spread out here. So these might be values, say, um, for example, could be 10, 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 17, 20, 21, 23 or something. So not equally spaced, let's say. If you want, say, the middle value, well, we'll just look at Q2. It should be just be the middle value of these entries. Where would Q1 lie in relation to the minimum Q2 and maximum? Where do you think? Sorry? Halfway between. Sorry? Halfway between minimum Q2, exactly. So um, that's where we would expect Q1 to be. And you could probably guess where Q3 should lie. Where would Q3 lie? Halfway between Q2 and maximum. Halfway between Q2 and maximum, right. Agree with the chat so far? Seems okay with these quartiles. Right, so those are our, um, our four quartiles. So if we want the interquartile range, it's simply the distance between um, Q1 and Q3. So the range between these two values. So what do we do? We sort them in order. So of course we need to make sense that these are ordered values. Find the median, which is Q2. We do, you find the median as we saw last time. And we find the median between the minimum and Q2, the middle value here. So that will give us Q1 and the middle, yeah. And for the middle value um, of Q2 and the maximum, that's going to give us Q3. And the, the interquartile range is simply the Q3 minus Q1. So that's the interquartile range. Right, range of the middle 50% of values. Everyone looks so good. Let's try some examples. Um, thinking whether I might do two or three examples. So here's our data set. 12, 15, 15, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 20, 23, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And we want to find the quartiles and then find the interquartile range. Right, so um, let's just try and look at this a little bit directly. Can we spot where the, um, where the median is, where Q2 is? <laughs> How many data values do we have? 16, yeah, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. The 16 values are N is 16. So, um, yeah. sorry, sorry we just, I thought I had, yep. okay, yeah, this would be 16. Um, where would the median values lie if there's an even number of scores? 1920, do we agree with that in chat? Yeah, so you could think, well, by the formula, um, we'd want to look at n plus 1 on 2, which is 17 on 2, which is um, 8.5. Or you could directly count that we should go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I think I just want seven, right? To start off with seven to there. Wait, I've missed I've missed one on the other side. Give me a second. Uh, that's why you do the formula sometimes. <laughs> uh, let me do that one more time. I skipped a value in the right side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so let's let's not work. Give me two seconds. Hang on, let me redo it. <laughs> One, two, one, two, three. I'm looking, I'm looking at the first one. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to 19. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to 18. So there, that's the middle point between these. So you want the midpoint of 19 and 20. Right. Or just note that's the eighth entry. Maybe, maybe that just convinces you to use the formula more. Right. So we want between the, the 18th and 9th entry. So the midpoint, uh, the median here, Q2, would be the midpoint of 19 and 20, which is 19.5. Um, let's go down a couple of steps. So we have this. Yep, so just what I've stated, that Q2 should be 19.5 between these ones. And now if we want um, Q1 and uh, uh, Q3, well, how do we find Q1? Yeah, we look at the midpoint of just these selection of values, right? And this time we're interested in eight values. So again, we want the midpoint um, between these ones, right? So our new our new n between these ones would be eight. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that means that Q1 should be the, the midpoint of 17 and 17. So what do we think Q1 is going to be? 17. Read in chat. Let's check it. So yeah, it's going to be the, the median of this data set, which is going to be 17. And finally, well, um, if we want the, so here was Q2 again, here was Q1. If we want the midpoint of the next ones, what do you spot? Maybe chat this time, what's Q3 going to be? So the median of 20, 21, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. What do we think for this case? 21.5. Let's see. So it's going to be between the 21 and the 20. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be the midpoint of these values, which is 21.5. So that's our Q3. So median of these values, which is indeed 21.5. Okay, and finally, put it all together. What is the interquartile range? If we're given Q1, Q2, and Q3, what do we think? Which is what value? Yeah, Q3 minus Q1, which is 21.5 minus 17, which is 4.5. Read in chat. It's 4.5. Right, let's take another another example. Let's say this one. So we're running from 53 to 66. How many data scores do we spot for this one? Sorry? 15. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. There's 15 values this time. So do we expect a single value for the median? So it's an odd number this time. So we would expect a, a, um, a single value. Which, which value would it refer to? What's our index for k? 8, yes. n plus 1 on 2 is 8. So we want x8, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it should be there. And just to confirm the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it is indeed the middle value. So our q2, our median value is 61. And if we want to consider um, the um, Q1, well, what am I taking the what's, what am I taking the median of? Yeah, there's a bit of a choice. You could say um, here we would just ignore the first the actual given median value. So we'd look at the median of 50 up to 58. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which one's going to be the median value? 56, the, the um, fourth entry there. 
So Q1 is going to be 56. And likewise, can we spot Q3? 63. So we want the midpoint of these ones, which would be here. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So Q3 is 64. 63, 63, not 64. So I'm going to check. Median of this value is 56. Median of the next lot. So these are indeed, if you notice, they are the ones up to and we're not including the middle value, um, 63. So finally, IQR, what's the interquarter range for this one? Is it pretty obvious? Maybe in chat? Seven, thanks, Matt. So that's going to be seven. Maybe I might, yeah, maybe I might skip the lecture example and cover back to it. It's the same, it's going to be another example. So yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that maybe. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so um, let's just discuss um, sort of a slight other um, generalization of quartiles. Um, that is called percentiles or um, yes, there's some other terms for deciles. And basically the idea is um, sometimes it's useful to look at not just splitting the data into quarters, but into tenths or hundreds. So you might be used to say something like um, um, whether someone got a mark in the 99th percentile of um, an exam or something. So quartiles separate the data into quarters, deciles separate them into tenths, and percentiles separate them into one hundredths. So I would say P80 represents the 80th percentile, so if you obtain a score of 80% or more. And there's some various examples. You could probably convince yourself D1 cuts off the 10% of scores, T4 cuts off the 40% of scores, D9 cuts off the 90% of scores. What's D8 going to cut off from chat? D8 cuts off the what percent of scores? Lowest eighty percent, excellent. So there's not nothing really too new there, right? So there's a visualization of um, those terms. Cool. Everyone good with this one? Not really much to say. Okay. Okay. So that's um. This is a very standard. Standard term, <laughs> hence the name. Um, so another way of measuring the uh, another way of measuring a spread or dispersion is called the standard deviation. Um, and again, maybe quite a few of you may have seen how do you compute this. But basically, it's a way of um, taking in all the all the inputs and giving a a reasonable way of describing the spread. Yes, so it takes into account all the scores. But it's less. Um, but it's less um, less subject to outliers and stuff like that. So an outlier would only cause a minor disruption to the standard deviation. So effectively, the idea is that if we've got um, a low standard deviation, we would expect our data to be clustered closer to the mean. So there's there's little dispersion. So th there's less spread. Whereas if we want, if we obtain a high standard deviation, this would account for a high spread, a high dispersion between data points. So it's sort of a, a way of um, dis distinguishing between the top case and the second case. And there's quite a few more things you could say about, about the standard deviation, but this is sort of the main intuition to take a, take away. Who's um who's who's heard of and seen standard deviation before today? In chat, are we here? Heard of it? Yep. Yeah, might, might not be brand new to some people, but that's the idea. So to calculate this, and th there is a way to calculate this on the calculator, but um, it's good to just to see the process, right, of, of how this works. So the idea is we look at the mean, and how do we encompass how far apart our data scores are from the mean? Well, we look at the differences. In particular, we look at the absolute value, but we're going to square this, so it doesn't really make a difference. So this takes into consider how far apart each score is from the mean. Um, we square this, so this sort of gives us a bit more indication of the, of the spread. 
we sum the squared um, deviations, that's the differences from the mean, divide this by the number n. So what we obtain here, so what we have so far, you don't really need to know a formula for this, but the expression we have so far is the um, square of these deviations, um, the sum of these, all divided by n. So this thing is called the variance, which is um, useful theoretically. Uh, this has the same units as the unit squared. And to get the standard deviation, we square this. So we should have written there, that's the square. So this is what we call the standard deviation. Uh, more specifically, the population standard deviation. Usually if we just say standard deviation, we mean the population deviation. This is this more standard way to approach it. And if we, similarly to the mean, if we had group data, we would just take the scores to be the class center. So if you have a range of values between A and B, you'd take the midpoint of A and B in between each, each score, each class center. And yes, as mentioned, the variance, which is just the square of the standard deviation. Sometimes you might see courses or do maths, which involves just using the variance. Um, the standard deviation is more intuitive because it's at the same same units as the the score, same as with mean. So if your data scores were in meters, the mean would also be in meters, and the standard deviation would be in meters. So, so we'll typically just talk about standard deviation for this course. Any questions up to this point? Variance. What have I misspelt it? I'm pretty certain it should be IA. Is it? Yeah. Uh, maybe Jonathan misspelt it. <laughs> Was it a question or? Okay, otherwise, feel free to post something in the chat. What do you think we're going to do next? Yeah, do an example, all right? Let's try this. So um, we want to find the standard deviation of these scores. Well, what's the first thing we want to note? Sorry? Right, and what do we need to so find the mean? What do we need to find the mean? There's one thing maybe just a step before that. Number of yeah, number of scores. But yeah, so we find the mean, find the number of scores. So that's five. Now n is five, which we need for the computation anyway, right? Um, Calculate the mean, so it's simply the sum of these values divided by five. What do we get? Does someone want to tell us what we get for the mean at least before I just tell you the answer? 6.6. 6. 6. Do we agree with that in chat? What do you, what do you obtain for the mean? 6.6. 6. You can use information for the standard deviation, right? That's to do with, I might talk about that more on Wednesday, that's to do with continuous um, um, distributions. So basically the integration is in place of a sum if it's continuous, but yes, we'll talk about that a bit more on Wednesday. Um, yeah, so 6.6, .6, I believe, should be the mean. So given by that sum divided by the total number. What did we do next? Someone remind me. <laughs> uh, find the deviation. Find the deviation, right? Read in chat, so find the deviation for each score. And it's sort of easy to table to tabulate this. So um, you want to compute um, x minus x bar. Here we here it is the absolute value, but because we square it, it doesn't matter if you take a negative or not, um, because we square it at the end. And we look at each score, three, four, five, nine, and twelve, and calculate the difference between that and the mean. Um, Okay, let's do the first two just by hand, just to see if we know the process. So um, the mean is 6.6. Is .6, so if I want the standard deviation, uh, sorry, the deviation of 3 was 6.6, .6, it's absolute value of 3 minus 6.6, .6, which is absolute value of 3 point, minus 3.6, which is just 3.6. So I only care about the fact that it's 3.6 there. What's the deviation from 4? 
right? So it's in absolute values is 2.6. Again, we square it because so it doesn't really make much difference. Let's do the whole thing. So five, five minus six point six, so minus one point six, one point six. Okay, chat, help us out. What what's the deviation from nine? The distance nine is from the mean. 2.3, 2.3 or 2.4, which one is it? Point 0.4, yeah. I have to be honest, when I tried this out, I did get 2.3 first. <laughs> yes, it's 2.4. And can we spot the deviation from 12? 12 and 6.6. 5.4, right? So that's going to be the first few values. So that's our, that's our values there. And then we would simply calculate the square of these things. And um, here you would probably just use a calculator or something. So, I mean, 1.6 is 2.56. What, what about 3.6 squared? What do we get for that value? Three point six or squared. Just to check we're okay with the process. Twelve point nine six, yeah, twelve point nine six. Um two point six squared, I guess that would be um uh what do we, what do people get for that one? <laughs> that was a six point six seven. I think you're right, yeah. So um let's just fill in the table. So I believe the values will end up with um well yeah, let's continue. Two point five six will be the next one. Let me erase that a little bit clearer. Two point four. Um, what do we get for this one? That'll be um, nine point six plus forty eight, right? So, um, what do we get? Five point seven six. We're in chat. Five point seven six. Yeah, five point seven six. And five point four squared. 29.16, was it? Yeah, one six. Yeah, so we can compute these pretty simply. Right, and the next stage was to sum them, right? So um, sum them in the divide by the total. So if we sum this, all right, let's try this chat. Chat, what do we get for the sum? If you sum those values together. Twelve point nine six, six point seven six. What do we get for our sum? Fifty seven point two. I think that sounds right. Um, yeah, there's five sixes, so it's going to cancel out that one. Yeah. Let's see if you correct fifty seven point two, fifty seven point two. <laughs> now, is this the variance? So do I square root this and get the standard deviation? No. What What do we have to do? Yeah, so don't forget we divide by n at this stage. So divide by n sort of accounts for the fact we've summed these, these squares up n times. So that's 11.44, and this is now the variance. If you're used to calculating with that. So to find the standard deviation, we simply take the square root. So the square root is 3.39. There isn't really a direct, well, it's in the same units. Um, it's sort of a bit hard to vi visualize exactly what the quantity 3.39 helps with but you can think that sort of gives an indication that's how much this varies by okay are we happy with this example stand deviation cool, cool. what do you trick calculation oh have I got this wrong 3.382 Two? Have I typed it in wrong? Is it supposed to be two six? Three point say that again, three point three Is that definitely the population send deviation? Have I typed that in wrong? Is that true in chat? Have I got that wrong the wrong way around? Uh, 
thread two three y by type six two. Okay. I don't know why that six two came from. Maybe I just mistyped it or something. Cool, cool. All right, so it's 3.382367. Okay, so given this information, and I guess it should be, um, if I want to make sure I'm answering this properly, it would be 24, right? So four decimal places. Hmm? That's 238, though. 238230. Okay, two, three. Two, three, zero, yeah, okay. All right, so that's the standard deviation, the population standard deviation. Um, the other thing just to take a note of is um, the, um, that there is a second type of standard deviation, and that is something called the sample standard deviation. So um, the idea is, we typically would use this by default. Uh, there's some application statistics if we're trying to estimate the mean. So we don't need to go into that too much detail, but the idea is um, you can also get a, um, a notion of the spread if we replace the n with n minus one effectively. And so this was gonna give us the sample standard deviation. Um, and your, your calculator probably will have two buttons which account for um, sigma n and sigma n minus one. So just be careful if you're computing the population Send deviation of the sample send deviation. Anyone come across the, the, the term as well? The sample send deviation? Right, so just be, be aware that there is, a, there is a second version, I guess. SX, yeah, that's something else that you might see called, um, you might see called SN or something. Um, maybe that's what you see on your, on your um, calculators for sample send, uh, sample deviation. And yes, we will only consider the population 10 deviation so divided by n. Okay, I guess let's just go back and do that last example. We've got a bit more time. Any questions up to this point, just for theory? Okay, um, let's move up a little bit. Um, let's just fill up that last one. Oh, and one thing, um, maybe just before I jump straight into this example, um, um, please do complete the My Experience surveys. I forgot to check when they when they finish, but um, it will be um, before your exams, right? So, um, uh, did anyone double check when the date was? I think it's 24th, 24th, 24th. Thanks, Peter. So, um, so and, and please do um, complete those surveys because it is very useful for us to get feedback. I, I do consider um, the feedback that I receive um, and try, try to try to improve upon it. <laughs> um, yeah, so particularly anything about the course, some content or delivery or to the style, I'm not sure if Remy might have put his name down for it or this one or not, not sure. But um, it's all valid feedback for us to, to see how, how the course went. It, it's anonymous and everything. Um, it doesn't subject to your marks or whatever. It's just um, a way for us to gauge how, how well we're going. Uh, let's do this last example. Yours has sigma x and sx. Yeah, so um, that's another way. You might see it with x, just to indicate x for scores. Different calculators might say different things. Um, right. Let's see. So um, we this example, so it's the same sort of thing. We wish to find Q1, Q2, Q3. Well, look for the middle value, right? So how many scores do we have for this example? 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 this time. So this time our n is 13. So the middle value would be, it's an odd, so it will be at the seventh value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, there's our Q2. And one spot our Q1 or Q3. What's our Q1 going to be? So 
So we split our data into the 10 to 21. That's our first lot of, of scores. So where would Q1 lie? Any thoughts? Why 17.5? I don't think 17.5 is halfway between 16 and 18. It's between 17 and yeah, 17. Yeah. Do we go with that in chat? Oh, well, I mean, do we agree that it should be 17? <laughs> Don't agree that 17.5 isn't halfway between 6 and 18. Yeah, so this puts it up into Q, uh, this puts up the middle section, so it should be 17. And um, what about the, um, the, the that's Q1, or what about our Q3? Twenty-three point five. Oh, yeah, uh, just in chat. So yeah, twenty-three point um, five. So let's indicate that clearly here. So ten is thirteen, and Q two is twenty-one. Q one is seventeen. The midpoint of those two values, and Q three is twenty-three point five. The midpoint of those two values, and that the IQR should be the difference between Q three and Q one, which is six point five. Same same process, right? Okay, um, let's think, do we want to start um, the third section or should I give you a bit of time to do the My Experience surveys? Maybe it might be actually more appropriate, I'll, I'll give you time to do the My Experience surveys um, before we jump into the random variable section. Is that fine from people from China? Any, any outstanding questions, queries? All right, I think I'll give you time to do the My Experience surveys before um, the tutorial for me, just to make sure that everyone's had a go um, at running through them. Um, I suppose I'll, I mean, I guess um, I shouldn't influence your, um, your score, so I suppose the, the principles I should actually leave <laughs> and um, not be part of you assessing me. <laughs> um, any questions before I sort of um, leave things there and we'll pick up the last part from Wednesday? Any general questions we're going to run through? All good. Right. For number data, why is Q1 and Q3 not coming from the middle one? Excellent question. So um, I guess that we can just keep it as a convention. So you're right. There, there is um, with that um, second example, um, which one was it? Where was the here? Right. Um, it's a convention, I guess. Yeah, you, you could conceivably think, well, take the middle value, including the median as well. Um, I would say just by choice, we'll just choose that. We'll um, cut it off from the um, the first few entries. There's, there's sometimes more generalizations where you would, um, especially if we go to dec deciles or et cetera, there's situations where we might consider um, um, not directly looking at the median or just um, just directly calculating where the, the one tenth or one hundredth place is exactly and then making a choice if it doesn't land on a particular um, score. So I guess the short answer is, well, we'll ignore the middle value just because I say so for the course. <laughs> it's a convention we'll take. Cool. No worries. Oh, um, I guess there was a couple of other things I wanted to mention that I forgot, and that is, um, yeah, Reg Submission 4 is out, and I mentioned that Reg Submission 5 has, has been available, so please do take a look at that. Um, I did also put the 2019 exam. Um, I pretty much only put that up because um, it just has instructions of um, what to do for the in-class, <laughs> in, in um, on-campus exam. That's pretty much the only reason I put it up. <laughs> you can take a look if you want, but the exam will be closer to the 2021 exam than the 2019 exam. So um, in terms of format, um, but yes, you will get um, um, uh, working booklets. 
and I might put a little bit more information on Moodle regarding the location of the exam, just so people aren't getting lost. <clears throat> cool. Um, anything else that I'm not just I haven't really covered? Um, I haven't heard anything differently um, regarding COVID case numbers going up. Um, I, I would say at least that we still are strongly recommending you bring in masks, especially for any, something like an exam where you're all sitting in the same place um, at the same time. Um, perhaps I should make sure we have them wiped and stuff for your desks. Um, I haven't heard that we're changing anything so far. Um, um, I guess also if um, if if someone is um, um, showing um, COVID symptoms or just general um, symptoms of being unwell, then you shouldn't really come to the exam, and you should probably just email me and immediately send something to special consideration, um, and get a doctor's certificate in that case. Um, Sounds like we're going to end up with statistics on the news in a few weeks' time. Well, then maybe I can put that as an exam question. <laughs> you could do some questions on it at the exam. Um, I hope not. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess there's not much else I can say except it's still, it'll be very strongly recommended that um, you're wearing masks and being social distancing and being keeping safe as best you can. So, yeah, there hasn't really been anything saying that we're not changing to the online exam. At least, at least nothing I've been told. Yeah, I guess that is something we should just be, be aware of and vigilant of. What was the question, Iman? So, um, sorry, um, you asked something right at the start. Um, let me, um, I might have to... No, you might have to retype it. I think you just managed... Oh, that was the question. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I disconnected right when you were asking something, right when I needed to be connected to see what the question was. All right, see you, see you on Wednesday. So um, thanks all. Do, do try and do that in my expense survey. You might as well take the time now. Um, for the tutorial. Just spend about five, 10 minutes on it. Um, just um, whatever honest feed rate you can provide us with is very helpful. Thanks so. all. Okay, thank you. I suppose it'll just tell you what size of bin he's on. The fiber sensor, but that's not that. Oh, yeah. All right, see you on Wednesday then, I suppose. See you Wednesday. Thanks, see you. Yeah. Um, I think we can probably just end the recording now. So let's. Um,